All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Woody from W. Thanks for joining. People don't know, what is, what is W? What does your company do? W is a better for you men's personal care brand for the Gen Z, Gen Alpha uh, in America. We saw a really big opportunity to bring a better personal care brand for this next generation of men. Mm -hmm. And I got to partner with Jake Paul to, to start this business and W stands for win. It is all about getting the W, building confidence in young men and starting your day literally with a W when you put on our product in the morning. That's a great tagline. So everyone was going to want to know, how did you partner with Jake Paul? What was that like? What, what, what did you see in the market? I think also, right? So there's two things. There's one, the Jake Paul piece and probably the opportunity of what it might look like. Uh, it's a tough category. For sure. I was lucky enough about four years ago, got, I, was, I was running a big e-com business in New York City. Same line or vertically? Uh, different. different. I was vertical? running, okay. I was the head of e-commerce at Casper, the director oh, consumer sure. mattress yeah. business. Nice. And was kind of the young, young analytical guy done investing in private equity, but really loved getting my hands dirty and operating and got to learn a bunch of different operating modalities at Casper and was friends with the investment firm in New York that backs a lot of the Kardashian brands. So that brought me out to LA. I got to be on the founding team of a brand called Safely that we started with uh, Kris Jenner. So that was my first foray into this crazy so world full of LA. celebrity brands and full <laughs> yeah. LA. Yeah, it was COVID, so it wasn't that full LA, but <laughs> still. Because of that, I was just, you know, I was the one one of very few young operators in the space who had celebrity experience, especially at the caliber of a, of a Kardashian, Kardashian or yeah. a Paul. So got in touch with Jake and his business partner, Jeff Wu, when they were just starting to kick the tires on wanting to, to start a brand and incubate a brand with an anti-fund. And we got to, you know, it was a couple months of dating. They were talking to a bunch of people, getting to know, getting to know me, getting to know them. But I think at the end of the day, they just liked you know, I love to get stuff done. And I, I basically build them the picture. I was like, guys, this is how we're going to do it. I already have the, you know, I have the, the branding playbook. agency, wow. I have the manufacturers, I have Walmart, because we had launched safely in Walmart. Okay. Like, and at that point, I realized okay. the real opportunity in CPG that I'm passionate about is can you bring better for you products to America? And I think the way to do that, there's no better retailer than Walmart. They just have the most scale. 90% of Americans shop there every week. Mm -hmm. And that was that was how I got connected with Jake was because I was in this celebrity world. And then also kind of their vision for what they wanted to start, which was a mass consumer brand, really aligned with what I was passionate about as well. And so when, when you were thinking about at least launching, so you guys are formulating products. What do you come into the table with? How long are you in like stealth mode figuring it out? Are you going to launch just a deodorant? What's the data telling you around like this younger generation, what they want, right? Because like I can think about Axe who developed the body spray. Yep. Before that, I kind of grew up in that world where you didn't really see a body spray. So that was For a sure. brand new thing. Before it was like bar soap and, and then body wash was a new thing. For sure. And so what is the Gen Z person? Is, it, is there a new thing or is it just doing it different? You know, I think what we're doing... I, I think is really innovative in a variety of ways. First, the demographic we have that we can tap into because of Jake, his fan base, you know, I've seen people as young as six come up to him on the street. His fan base, I think of as 10 to 30. Wow. He really has that young male consumer's attention. And when I looked at the landscape and when we looked at the landscape of brands, we really didn't see a brand targeting that demographic. I kind of break it into a few different, I call it like the satirical lumberjack brands of the category. Okay, yeah. Your dad's brands. Like right. I, I use Old Spice when I would turn 13 because that's what my dad used. Yeah. And I used it until I switched to W. <laughs> and then there's also kind of like the genderless kind of neutral brands that, you know, are really just about a very clean branding perspective. They don't really come with personality. And what we saw in this category is that there just wasn't a brand that resonated with that young male consumer because the brand you choose to put on first thing in the morning really is, it's a persona you're identifying with. And usually it's it's a brand you're, you're a buyer of for life. Yeah. And so that was kind of the white space. Like Axe launched in the US in 2002. Okay. It was the hottest thing since sliced bread in middle That's school. That's so true, yeah. And then it lost its cool. Yeah. Um, they didn't really evolve. And I, I mean, Old Spice did too, but Old Spice did a good job of reinventing themselves with totally. a killer marketing campaign. Totally. I mean, Old Spice is, is a behemoth, but yeah. I think still it really it really targets that slightly older. Like I still think of okay. that, you know, my dad still uses Old Spice. I think I think they haven't 
totally tapped into the younger generation, at least as we, we see it. So that's the white space you saw. That's there. the white, white space we saw. Yeah. And then in terms of product categories, we saw a really interesting opportunity. Most new brands that launch into the space launch at a premium. They, and we saw a really interesting opportunity. And this was kind of a, a playbook we took from Logan at Prime. They launched head-to-head with Gatorade and priced themselves a cent below Gatorade. Wow. So when we started formulating our products, we just wanted to be at parity to the main main players in the category so we can eliminate at least one aspect of friction when it comes to switching cost. Interesting. And then you can now... What, like, what is that dollar amount? Just curious on like a deodorant today. Our deodorant today is priced for six ninety seven in Walmart. Okay. And then from an ingredients perspective, and I, this was a learning from my last company as well, which is people say that they want kind of the all natural, super eco-friendly products. But I think what we're seeing increasingly is that people aren't necessarily voting with their wallets when it comes to those okay. purchasing decisions, at least not in mass America, sure, right? Sure. The Whole Foods consumer all day. Air one for that sure. isn't yeah. Jake. You know, I think we all live on the coasts and I think too many people are making products for themselves that they will buy. And really the opportunity to have a really big positive impact is to make products for America and for, for Walmart. Yeah. And so when we took, took our product formulation approach, we just wanted to make better products. So we took out parabens, took out sulfates, took out artificial dyes. We took out a lot of these like really nasty things yeah. without making it all natural, but it's, it's definitely better for you. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's a massive gift to society. If we can make these products for like 30 to 50% better from an ingredient base at the same price, like that's a massive impact you can have if you get this into the hands of 50 million people. I do love on your website, it says like made in America yeah. minus the bald eagle or something. Yeah, what does exactly. that say? Yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then at, under the, uh, does it contain aluminum? It goes something like, yeah, dummy, it's the aluminum that helps yeah, the it's FDA. Aluminum that works. If it's good enough for the FDA, it's good enough for us. Exactly. I love that. When, um, when you guys were going to launch, so, so Jake, Obviously, well-known person. Didn't know about the demo. That's interesting until he crushes the 10 to 30-year-old yeah. person, boy, man specifically. Were you hesitant at all? Like, what is this going to look like in terms of making him the face? Yeah, I think we talked a lot about that. And I think there's a reason why this isn't called, you know, Jake Paulers or something. Like, okay. It's not explicitly <laughs> Jake Paul's brand, right? right? The brand is W. It has a very distinct brand identity, a really strong presence on shelf. And it's a very different approach than, say, like a Feastables, right? Uh, we look at Skims as kind of the best-in-class example of a brand that really leveraged celebrity firepower to raise brand awareness. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, Skims is really eclipsed Kim. Like on that customer adoption curve, that next cohort of that's customers true. that's buying Skims, yeah, probably not a Kim Kardashian fan, that's right? That's true, right? And that's that's what we're trying that's to build really with, with W. Jake doesn't want to be the face of the brand. He is he is the co-founder. He is the founder, and he will be heavily involved in the brand. But we want, really want the brand to take on a life of its own and ultimately eclipse him if we're successful. Yeah. And we're starting to now bring on this month. We'll start bringing on um, and publicly announcing and doing content with some different people we're calling co-owners, people who are equity owners in the brand that are kind of winners in their own domain of life, but doing it their own way, uh, who people really respect. This younger generation really respects and envies. And so that's all part of trying to build a universe around the brand that is separate from Jake. But Jake, he is one of the best marketers on earth. He knows how to get attention and create virality. And it's been really, really cool. We, like we always, one of our internal sl- uh, slogans as a business is we different. Mm-hmm. And we're trying to do things differently than other brands, which I think you saw from, da- and a lot of this is, you know, it's very much Jake's DNA and he leads a lot of these ideas. Like when we launched, which I think we're probably the first brand to still do AI deep fakes at scale. But when we launched, we did, we did these viral deep fake videos okay. that went absolutely crazy. It got us well over 100 million impressions on the internet where we'd send these deep fake videos to people and it was them talking to themselves from the future where something really bad is gonna happen unless they start smelling better. And it was, it was wild. It really took the internet by storm. That's and then awesome. you know, the next month we do a punching machine for Jake's fight where okay. you can go punch Jake Paul in the face. That gets another 100, 200 million impressions so every month we're just thinking of these really fun, fun activations that hit on kind of, you know, the idea of getting the W, but also on our value propositions as a brand and product propositions. And we have an amazing creative director who just really can riff on these ideas with Jake and bring them to life. So 
it's just a lot of fun working with him and he just, he understands how to create brand awareness. And like, we have this brand awareness tracker that we take a random survey every month of the U S population. And it's been awesome to see. Like, I think we just hit 9% aided brand awareness in the U S in less than four months as a business. And I like that has to be a record. Yeah. Like I know brands that have been around for 10 years that don't have that. So that's just the power of Jake Paul. And I think what he brings to the brand and, and we're really trying to build the brand so it can evolve beyond him. So and, when, you, when you're working with like Walmart, so at, at some degree, like they're the retail giant, they know the game, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And to some extent, they understand what products are needed or, or what the consumer is wanting. Yeah. And so you guys are bringing Jake Paul in with this brand awareness metric. You must be teaching them something, I could imagine. Or are they like, what is that like now? Are, are you guys sharing some information around how they should think about brand development, the future, given that social media is such a big thing? What's that like? Totally. Yeah. I mean, I think one thing we've done a really good job of, like we, we specifically didn't launch a DTC business for, for W. We went retail first all the way. We probably will launch a DTC business eventually because our price point is so affordable. It just doesn't make sense. We would be profit negative on every order, just driving people to our website and then right. shipping, shipping and all yourself. those things. Right. We've driven a ton of awareness to Walmart, like in all this content we do, we are driving people to Walmart. Walmart's logo is in in the influencer box. They're on, we sponsored a NASCAR. They're on the NASCAR. Like they are primary CTA for us as a brand, which they love. And they're now, they're like their Walmart VPs, SVPs, C-suite is now talking about W is like a best in class Walmart launch to follow and to emulate, which is really, really cool. So I think we're teaching them how to use social media at scale to drive virality because the content we're putting out as a brand is so drastically different than what every other brand puts out. Usually it's like a product shot or like a, yeah. you know, come shop with me piece of content. And, and ours really isn't about that. It's really, it's really personality driven. And we're almost acting as if we're a creator, not a brand in a lot of the content mm-hmm. we're putting out today, which is, which is a lot of fun. And they're learning a lot from that because it's just a super different approach than a 100%. lot of these brands. One of the things I want to ask you, like talk to the younger entrepreneur, right? So the entrepreneur who's just starting. So you come in, you have your relationships, you've sort of done it before. You've worked with Chris Kardashian a little bit. So it earns you the right to be in a different room. Yep. Then you get Jake involved, but you, you're smart enough to know not to just stop there. Yep. Right. And you have to keep going. And so Jake's a small piece, a big piece, but in the world of becoming a successful company, a smaller piece, yep. let's say, because there's so many other things you have to get right. Yep. What are the things that you can impart to like the young entrepreneur around the things that like keep you up at night? What are those Yeah, things? I mean, I, I think there's a bunch of fundamentals of business. I'm super like, I was fortunate enough, although it was an absolute grind to start my career in investment banking and private equity investing, I learned the fundamentals. I think the numbers are everything, right? I think one mistake a lot of entrepreneurs make, and this was the first thing we did at, at, when we started working on this project, and I think for most people it's the last thing, we, start, we focused on price point and cost of goods sold. Mm-hmm. I think focusing on the fundamentals of your business are really, really important because I've seen with too many, too many businesses, people will focus on just getting a product, getting it out there, launching it on a website, and then, you know, if it's successful two years down the road, they're reformulating, they're repricing, they're redoing all their packaging because they didn't think about where they want to be. And I think that's one thing that I've really learned and has set me up for success as an operator is we're thinking about where we want to be five years down the road when we're designing the brand from day one. And most people, like most consumer brands, rebrand within the first two years um, because they're not retail ready. And so that's one thing we we really focused on from day one. Uh, I also think like, really knowing where your product can succeed. Like we were very deliberate on trying to get into Walmart. And I think one thing I've learned is you can, you can get in touch with anyone. Right. And it's just about, it's about hustle and it's about using your network. And I think that's one thing I've learned to do really, really well over the years is like, I know if I need to get in touch with literally anyone in the next week, I could do it if I really had to. And I think anyone has the ability to do that. And it's just about, you know, digging into it because like you know if you're like hey urban outfitters target walmart this is the perfect place for my brand like there is a way to get in that door yeah. you just need to work hard enough to do it yeah. i think too many people take the easy way out and are like oh, i'm just gonna launch a dtc business um <laughs> yeah i hear you obviously what we've done is really hard but i think i think really it's about the fundamentals and then it's about building a great team making great hires i think that's one thing that's a big focus of mine for the next you know three to six months 
I have been so in the weeds because, you know, we got, we need to be hands on, hands on keyboard building this thing. And now that it's humming, I need to start thinking two, three, four years out. So now I'm trying to bring on just an absolute SWAT team of veterans who can take on the day to day for me. So I can be looking further out in the future. Yeah. And I'm having to make that and we're th four months into the business. It's a super quick pivot. Most people do that probably 18 months into the business. But I think like all of those things are, are really important. I think hiring, like nailing the fundamentals and just like the hustle is everything. Yeah. So you guys are in a space, there's green space. The younger consumer is different. Yeah. When you think about emerging things, like, so you mentioned the NASCAR piece. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Pickleball? What green space do you see from like a, a sponsorship perspective where other brands are sleeping in this space? Yeah. So we're cooking on some fun stuff. Yeah. And you I, just raised a bunch of capital. Yep. Right. We raised, we raised Naomi Osaka on board. Maybe, maybe tennis is a little sleepy. Give yep. it some edge. What's, yep. what's happening? You know, we think about at least today, I'm sure as we scale up, like, yeah, we just raised a bunch of money, but we are operating at a big scale. So we have a lot of working capital needs as a business to build product. And I, I'm constantly pushing my team to be scrappy. Like I always talk about it as creating spectacle. So when we're partnering with a sports team or an athlete, we're not as focused on kind of that, that subconscious logo impression, at least not right now of like, Hey, you're going to have a W a W logo on your shirt. We're like, what can we do? You know, say we were to do something in tennis. It's like, what is some ridiculous stunt we can do on the court that's going to get us 200 million impressions on social media, right? Or with, you know, we're cooking up, trying to cook up some things with some auto racing teams. Like, how do we do something that both drives awareness of the athlete and the team while also driving brand awareness while also being on brand with this idea of kind of getting the W and building confidence? I think that's how we think about it. Versus, you know, saying we spend a million dollars on a, on a, a team sponsorship. That to me isn't what we're supposed to be doing right now as a brand. Sure. Uh, we need to be doing that when we're much bigger. But right now, it's really about working with people who enjoy being disruptive, want to be a little viral, want to push the boundaries. Because we've been having so much fun and seen so much success doing that as a brand that that's really what we want to keep leaning into. Yeah, the disruptor piece. Yeah. That's really powerful. And that's Jake. Yeah. There's no. T. Yeah. What can people expect from you guys? I know you just launched, but like 2025, what's on deck? What can you, what can you share? What can you leak? For sure. Yeah. I mean, I think when it comes to product portfolio, you know, we launched in Walmart in every Walmart in America, which was a big, a big launch day one. It was a big risk. And then, but luckily it's paid off. And we also launched with a big product portfolio. We have 23 SKUs in Walmart right now. And we launched in the biggest categories in men's personal care. We launched deodorant, body spray, body wash, two in one bar soap. And that was intentional, like be in the categories that people buy every week and use every day and try to build brand loyalty that way. And so I think 2025 is going to be a lot of fun. We are going to start innovating on digital commerce. So TikTok shop, Amazon, yeah. which I think will be really, really fun for us just because we are so digitally native as a brand to start experimenting with. And then on the product front, we see a lot of white space in these categories because again, like our approach to innovation, although not super innovative on its surface, to me is massively innovative and we can bring much better, cleaner formulas to the mass consumer at an affordable price. Like that is disruptive at scale. And so we think there's an opportunity to apply that playbook to a variety of categories. And I think for us, we're gonna be, my plan as of now is to really try to lean into TikTok and Amazon as kind of our experiment ground for those products is if you launch in you know a Walmart or a national retailer, those categories reset once or twice a year. And you know, if it doesn't go well, it's gonna get pulled. Yeah. But on a TikTok shop or an Amazon, I can launch a new product line and see how it's doing relative to our existing SKUs. And that's gonna give us a really good read of like what should we be pushing into retail. So it's gonna be a combination of factors. And then we're working on some this will probably be 25, 26. I think, you know, W is about the win and it's about confidence and what's it's about what you put on your body or in your body to be confident. And I see a, a lot of different product categories where we could go into and really have an impact for young men by leaning into that confidence message and getting the W like, how do you need to prep your body or like prep your skin for the day to get the W there's just, if we can keep building this idea of like, we're the brand that resonates with young men and that they relate to, I think we have a lot of product breath to explore. When you view it that way, do you view it as 
you grow by acquisition or would you want to guys like start your own thing? I think there's a lot of categories that are kind of in the personal care space or adjacent to the personal care space where the W brand has permission to play. If we keep building it the way, like there are some categories where I just don't know if we'll have the permission to play. Like, you know, never say never, but look at like hydration drinks. Sure. Like, I actually think you could make an argument that, you know, being hydrated is part of getting the W, but I don't, I don't think we're gonna become, you'd basically be a Kirkland brand, right? Yeah. Which is one of the biggest consumer <laughs> brands of all time. Yeah. But I don't know if we have permission to play there. So there's certain categories that we're not gonna do, but I think in the personal care space, in terms of like, you know, what you have in your gym bag, what you have in your, your, your medicine cabinet, or kind of in your bathroom cabinet, I think there's a lot of different, different areas we can play. I'm a bar soap guy. Will the bar soap ever go away? What is the data telling you? Was the younger generation really using bar soap? You know, I think you got to give credit where credit's due. Dr. Squatch is like an amazing competitor in the space and they made bar soap cool again. Yeah. Uh, it had a renaissance <laughs> okay. with, with Squatch. And I think, I think the category is coming back. I mean, once you start using bar soap, it's a really nice tactile feel, right? It's good for exfoliating your skin. Yep. I personally like bar soap too. Um, so I, I, I do think... I, I like never say never. Don't sleep on and look. Heritage brands are coming back, right? Like look at Stanley. I think there actually are some really interesting opportunities to bring them back some of these heritage products and heritage categories. And like bar soap is a heritage product category that really hasn't been reinvented in a while. Yeah. So there's definitely an opportunity, but that's another one where there's this interesting like, you know, there's an interesting price arbitrage. Uh, like a Dove, a bar, a bar of Dove soap is pretty pretty darn affordable. But the industry has really gotten people to trade up with 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 body wash. So where can people shop today? Walmart. Where else can they find you guys? Yeah. So we're that is where you can find us. We're in 4,300 nice. WalMarts across America. You can also buy us on Walmart.com. And then probably right right before the end of the year, we'll be start being available on TikTok Shop and uh, and Amazon. And we'll really push Amazon out in a big way in Q1. Woody, thank year. you. Thanks for joining the pod. Yeah. This was awesome. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, share with your friends, your family, or anyone you might think might benefit from the conversation we've had today. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. We'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us improve and reach more people who can benefit from our discussions. The best way to stay connected with us and get the latest updates on future episodes is through our social media channels. You can find us at Startup Storefront. We'll be back next Tuesday with another great episode. See you then.